As a dentist or dental student, when you work in a clinic or in a hospital, you obviously have noticed several different types of the waste that get accumulated by the end of the day. Similarly, there is also waste generated in healthcare research facilities and laboratories. All these wastes combined are called healthcare waste. Here, it's important to understand that the waste generated during medical procedures carries a greater risk of infection and harm than any other kind of waste. Thus, improper and careless disposal of this trash could have negative effects on the environment and the public's health. Therefore, it is crucial that we handle this medical waste using secure, trustworthy techniques. How can we determine which type of waste should be disposed of using a specific manner though? With so many different types of waste disposal options available. To achieve this, we have divided healthcare waste into 9 major types, which we shall discuss in the current video. For simplification, we can learn the categories as the kind of waste found mostly in a particular department. For example, in the oral and maxillofacial department, it is most common to find mainly two types of waste. First are the sharps, which could be in the form of needles or blades. Human tissue or fluids like body parts and blood are examples of pathological waste, which may also be commonly found here. Next, in the conservative dentistry department, when a patient walks in with a cavity, there are times when we use silver amalgam as our choice of filling. This contains mercury as one of its primary components, the remnants of which, after the procedure, is categorized as waste with high content of heavy metal. Now, when an anxious and uncooperative child walks into your clinic, how do you go ahead with the treatment without putting the child under general anesthesia? We use the technique of consciously sedating the child. We will learn about this method in detail in its respective video, but for context, Note that this procedure requires a gas cylinder of oxygen and nitrous each. These gas cylinders, when ready to be disposed of, can be categorized as pressurized containers. So, is there waste which could be common to all departments? Well, the answer is yes and there are three main categories of waste here. First is the infectious waste, which could include lab cultures or any equipment for that matter that has come in contact with infected patients like suction tubes, used cotton, and etc. Any kind of disinfectant or lab reagents are categorized as chemical wastes. Lastly, as you would have noticed, all departments will have the basic drugs required for treating any emergency that may arise on the dental chair. But at times, these drugs remain unused and cross the expiry date. These drugs then belong to the pharmaceutical waste section. Other than the above mentioned, we also have genotoxic wastes and radioactive wastes. Genotoxic wastes are those substances which have carcinogenic properties like cytotoxic drugs or the vomit or urine of patient using these drugs. Radioactive waste, on the other hand, includes unused liquid from radiotherapy and contaminated glassware among others. To quickly recap, there are 9 categories under which healthcare waste has been segregated. These are pathological waste, sharps, waste with high mercury content, pressurized containers, infectious waste, chemical waste, pharmaceutical waste, genotoxic waste, and lastly, radioactive waste. Knowing which category a given type of garbage falls under is crucial for ensuring that the best disposal strategy is applied. We will learn more about the techniques for handling healthcare waste in the upcoming video. For more such videos, download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.